Hi friends, welcome back to Trending. Today is Thursday, April 18th, about 9.35 as we're recording. Good morning, Joe. How's it going? Doing good. How are you? I'm all right, man. This is a busy day. It is. This is going to be maybe a shorter episode. Yeah. We both have to be somewhere here in just honestly a few minutes. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> let's see how this goes. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is uh, this happens every once in a while, but it's rare. That usually I find a topic and pitch it to you to get things rolling. You Today really you are gonna sh- kind of get this thing started. So tell us what we're talking about today. All right. So um, I don't think uh, many of our trending audience watched the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, but they just had like a big event. They just had their 300th uh, event. It was a pay-per-view event. It was stacked. The whole fighting world was in Vegas to watch it. Okay. okay. So if you missed it, folks. You know, I'm not surprised, and it's fine. You didn't <laughs> miss anything, right? But it was something that happened afterwards. So um, Max Holloway, uh, kind of a popular fighter in the UFC, uh, won a great match against Justin Gaethje. Um, and afterwards, of course, these fighters, they kind of get on Twitter, X, whatever, social mm-hmm. media platforms to begin to, you know, chirp at each other. And yep. uh, the one of the current champions in a different weight division, his name is Ilya Teporia. Um, basically tried to call out uh, Max Holloway, and uh, he did so, and he cited a, a well-known Bible verse. We okay. I mean, just kind of put it down at the end of the message. Yeah. Philippians 4.13, right? Okay. Yep. The same one that was, you know, in Tim Tebow's Eye Black yes. that many athletes use. It's probably the FCA banner verse, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So they kind of, you know, plucked it out of the end of that longer paragraph of Philippians and it's an inspiring passage, okay? Mm-hmm. On coffee mugs, yes, t-shirts, tattoos, yes, you name it. Mm-hmm. It's it's made its way around the world, right? Yeah. Okay. In response, Max Holloway, who claimed, I think maybe he's a Bible reader, maybe he's a Christian, he uh, cited, he kind of replied back, and then he decided Jeremiah fifty one verse twenty, which. I don't think Awana has that in their batch of Bible memorization <laughs> verses. Okay. There's no kitchen in America that has that on like a doily. That's, That's right. Not, it hasn't made it there. Yeah, okay. but in our trading audience is very, very biblically literate. Okay, yes. but in case they need a little refreshing, I don't know that verse. Okay, so why don't you remind yes. us okay. what that verse says? Seems to be a direct quote from God. Okay, and it says this: uh, "You are my war club, my weapon for battle. With you, I shatter nations. With you, I destroy kingdoms." Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Original context probably was not uh, for an individual person, yeah. but for a nation that God's using to you know enact judgment on that part of the world. Okay. Yeah. But what I found even more uh, compelling <laughs> was Sports Illustrated Online did an article about this, and um, the author of the piece um, cited another Bible passage from the New Testament. Yeah. They misquoted. Uh, they said Timothy twenty two, which, yes. as we all know, there's no <laughs> Timothy <laughs> and no cha- there's no chapter twenty two. But w- what we think they may have meant was Second Timothy chapter two, verses twenty three to twenty five says this: Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got all this, like, this sparring, back, this you know, chirping back and forth, mm-hmm. citing individual Bible verses completely plucked out of their context. Um, I guess on the one hand, like we should be excited that people are talking about the Bible, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, it's rare for it to be quoted, especially in UFC context. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There was, we were watching UFC once, and there was a guy who actually held a Bible in his hand as he was being awarded the victory in a match. Like he was, wow. it was kind of awkward. Like he was holding it, and he was, uh, he's Brazilian, so he's speaking Portuguese. Yeah. And, uh, you know, me and the two skillies were watching, mm-hmm. flipping through channels, and we're like, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> this guy just got done. You know, uh, beating somebody up and he's holding a Bible. Someone, yeah. and he's got a Bible in his hand, like all that. Don't want to judge people for what they do and mm-hmm. what they believe. Like I think one of the wonderful gifts of Christianity is, I mean, the base of someone becoming a Christian is yeah. they have a personal trust in Jesus, right? Yeah. Um, and then we can begin after that. I guess we can begin to talk about what they do with mm-hmm. their lives and their vocation. Yeah. But just you know, God meets us where we are, mm-hmm. and if that's where they are, I guess that should be you know. Noteworthy, it should be, I guess, praiseworthy, if you'd like. Yeah. But it's just interesting that um, that there seems to be this common practice of 
Taking a Bible verse, I wanted to say something, and because mm-hmm. the weight of the Bible is behind it, that people should hush. You know, there yeah. should be no re- response, no reply, no rebuttal, because yeah. I have this clobber passage. Right. Which, what we say, we, I remember saying in seminary, is there a clobber passage for this topic? Yeah. And uh, that is often cited. Mm-hmm. And so um, this has been kind of some behavior that's um, in a biblically literate culture like ours. People mm-hmm. can just like take a Bible verse and kind of. So that's the end of the matter because right. I've got a verse. And yep. so, anyways, interesting behavior. Just want to get your take on it. You, I mean, you've been a church worker, been a Christian. You've you've watched Christian dialogue and discourse for quite a long time. Yeah. Any thoughts? Yeah. On <laughs> this type of behavior, not just because it's in the UFC. Yeah. But because it's it's everywhere. Like yes. any any re- re- reply or response to that. I have a couple, but then I would love to hear your because I'm sure you also have sure, much sure. more to say, and you've thought about this more than I have probably. Right. But we talked about this just a few weeks ago, actually, with the whole Kanye and the Christian celebrity thing, where yeah. he it's, it seemed like he maybe took a couple verses out of context and kind of held on to. Right. We talked about verses like if you ask anything in my name. You'll what, can you remind me what that verse is. Speaking of picking out a verse out of context, yeah, but it's basically what has been kind of dubbed the prayer of faith. Ask for anything in my name, and my Father will give it to you. Yeah. Yes. yes. And so that again, if you if that's the only verse you read about prayer or God's will, you probably have a different understanding than if you were to read the whole New Testament, for example. Right. So I think that's the danger of it. And I guess one, I think this is probably true for honestly anything that's kind of controversial. You probably could find a verse that you could use to back up almost anything. Right. And I know just a quick example of that. So in my family, we have some family members who are very hardcore, um, Calvinist, predestination, like they're very into that. And so they've got their verses that seem to be pretty pretty convincing, right? Right. But then if you talk to someone who's on the other side of the spectrum and they believe that in free will and all the, on that end of things, they've also got their set of verses. Right. Same book. And you, you, I think we've talked about this before. If you if you don't do your homework, if you don't look at context, unfortunately, you can make the Bible pretty much say whatever you want it to say if you're only looking at one, just a handful of words. Right. If you're going to nail down five or six words, right. you can maybe you can misuse it, right? right? So, but you have to take the whole thing into context. You have to, I think it's wise to take in history, and right. there's a lot of things that come into play other than just a handful of words. Right. So, yeah, and I, I've heard you talk about this quite a bit. So, what else would you yeah. add to that? No, nothing more. Uh, to that. It's like just, a, but just to remind us that, like the Bible's native uh, appearance, its native medium was not verse by verse. Um, mm-hmm. Verses were added in the 16th century. Yeah. I do not think that they were added so that we could do this, but I think it's just for quicker referencing. Yeah, I'll go to this chapter and this verse. And mm-hmm. so um, the Bible in its original like construction was, you know, big long passages, paragraphs, and people would yeah. take those in. Mm-hmm. It was common for corporate worship to have just several like paragraphs read at, at once, you know, yeah. you know, big volumes of scripture mm-hmm. read. And so I think this like uh, what Lynn Sweet called it versitis. He's like, he worries that the modern Christian has versitis mm-hmm. where we take a verse at a time. We daisy chained a few of them. And now we've got this, what we've informed opinion, biblical yeah. opinion mm-hmm. about something when we actually probably, it's maybe a little more complicated than that. Yeah. And so I would just say, remember that, um, an English translation of the Bible is a second order of theological discourse. Like yeah. people, like translator committees mm-hmm. or paraphrase committees, depending on your translation. Like they had to, they had to make calls, mm-hmm. and a lot of times they'll actually share their work on that. They'll share yeah. that in a footnote mm-hmm. or in a bit of a subscript, so that uh, people can be reminded that. Uh, these, you know, the original audience was mm-hmm. speaking Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic. Yeah. Uh, so it's been taken work to get into the English language, to be updated even to the modern, most modern English uh, parlance. Mm-hmm. And so we have to once again remind ourselves, uh, this was first written to an audience that probably didn't have me in mind. Yeah. And so I'm kind of a guest uh, mm-hmm. to this conversation. Mm-hmm. And therefore, don't colonize the text. Yeah. Uh, be a guest to the text mm-hmm. and allow the history of interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> 
discuss it in communities because we yeah. have our own little blinders and biases on, and mm-hmm. maybe our friend and neighbor next to us can help reveal something that we're not quite ready to see. Mm-hmm. And so um, I just think that sometimes um, we deploy the Bible uh, for something that we've already been, we've already concluded. Um, mm-hmm. we've, we've already got a conclusion. Okay, how can I strengthen my conclusion yeah. by getting a collection of verses instead of allowing the verse to, uh, the, or the Bible to read us uh, yeah. and to help uh, shape us into people with transformed minds. And so um, once again, uh, just going back to this idea that um, it's a lifelong journey of faith. Mm-hmm. Um, there were Christians before us. If Jesus tarries, there's going to be Christians after us. We're always going to be in conversation about what the text has already said. Mm-hmm. And so it's good to uh, listen to uh, older minds, uh, to be eager to see what our kids and their generation might say to the text. Yeah. I think it's good to like allow scholars to weigh in as well. I think there's some communities that actually stiff arm scholars because they think that um, they're going to be uh, they're going to change their mind in an inappropriate way because of you know scholarship's agenda. No, I think that we should welcome all these choir of voices. Yeah, and then of course listen to Jesus, listen to the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, within our community, and uh, try to be as informed as possible as we yeah. read this text. So no, that's good. Yeah. Two kind of quick thoughts. I'm just you can respond to sure. a couple quick things here. So, is this partially? Do you think just our modern postmodern just short attention spans like most most people honestly don't don't they just don't take the time to read a whole chapter or several chapters or do some research so we kind of and our we're used to taking sound bites and headlines and so that we do the same thing with the bible here's a verse yeah i like here's what it we we did we kind of do this everywhere right yeah. yeah so is it kind of just a byproduct of the culture that we need to kind of fight against i think it could, say? i think it could be and listen i mean a lot of the bible it, you can plainly read it and you're probably mm-hmm. landing in a safe place of yeah. what you think impressed at what you think it means mm-hmm. there are some trickier spots uh, yeah. there's genres that we're just not real familiar with mm-hmm. and the agenda is that these um and uh, agenda is not a dirty word there yeah. when we write something we persuade every conversation is a negotiation so as the biblical writers are writing to their communities they're trying to negotiate the faithful path forward and so they are employing sometimes ancient rhetoric devices that are just no longer useful pick it up read it Mm -hmm. i would just say pick it up read it but also have some heavier books along to at least consider Mm -hmm. uh, what folks who dedicated their whole vocation to try to interpret an ancient text yeah. I say about this thing. Yeah, so it takes time. Mm-hmm. And reread it. Uh, don't read it once and say, I've got Second Timothy covered. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Because we might have been distracted in a hurry, or we may not have uh, considered uh, this verse connect as it connects to a larger passage. Yeah. And so I think that's why we get to it, read to it again and again. I think that's why the church, uh, a lot of big swaths of the church does the lectionary readings, which mm-hmm. repeats every three years. They come yeah. to these texts again and again mm-hmm. every three years because there's new light that we can see because we maybe weren't as attentive um, in the last time that we considered it. So, yeah. 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 I would say it does take time mm-hmm. and it does take uh, more minds than ours uh, to get to the heart of the text. Yeah, yeah. That's good. One more quick question. We'll start to wrap up here. All right. Yeah. But I, I wonder if this is also one of these kind of unintentional, unintended consequences of, yeah. um, like, I think in modern evangelical culture, it's deemed to be a good thing to memorize scripture. Yeah. And we've, we've, I think we've even talked before about how in ancient times, if you're following a rabbi, if you're a very good student, you might memorize the whole Old Testament, right? right? Yeah, at least have which like is, a working knowledge of it. Right? Yeah, which yeah. to me that seems very daunting. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. so in the in the modern context, what a lot of us, if we were raised in church, we all have the same 20, 25 verses that we're taught to kind of memorize. Yeah, I think that's a good practice. Yes, but I do wonder if this kind of leads to the versitis thing. Right, and we've talked in. Uh, both at our house, but I've talked with Tilly, and then in the Strength in Your Marriage class, we've talked about when you're raising kids, kids' Bibles really only have 15 stories in them. Mm-hmm. They're the same ones that they hear all. We've got Noah, we got Moses, we got Jonah, we got Daniel, we got Jesus. Right. It's pretty much it. So is is that? Are we kind of? Are there some of these unintentional consequences when we mm. we only learn a handful of verses? Right. We only teach our kids a handful of stories. Is, are we kind of are, is that leading to this? Do you think? And how can we realistically fight against this kind of longer term? I think it could, and I think it, as long if it's if it's accompanied with this like mastery thing, like I have now maybe mastered the content of the Bible because I've got a working knowledge of these 
you know, few stories, ones that are easier uh, to read, um, ones that are exciting. And so like they're fun to read. Yeah. They're and fun and exciting, but they're not really easy. That's well, Noah yeah. and Jonah and all the, those are hard stories. I mean, if, if we're honest. Yeah. yeah. They're not, they're not so easy. Yeah. But like, if you get into the doldrums of like mm-hmm. deep lo- parts of Leviticus or Deuteronomy yeah. and um, deep parts of Jeremiah, where if you, you're, if we're not in touch with the, you know, sociopolitical strife and developments mm-hmm. are happening there, we're going to miss the message completely. Right. right. We're going to be like Max Holloway, and I'm not dunking on him here, because like, mm-hmm. many of us do this. Yeah. But plucking a verse out of something that has like it was never intended <laughs> for, <something laughs> for a that. UFC fight. That's right. <laughs> and so I guess um, I I admire. I think it was Eugene Peterson who said it. If it wasn't him, you know, I apologize me for the misrepresentation. Uh, but he said like you're never going to master Christianity. Like, yeah. We're always going to be white belts. Mm-hmm. You know, at Christianity, as long as we have that posture, yeah. as we read the Bible again and again, mm-hmm. I think that we'll enjoy it. Yeah. I, don't know, I, I don't know about you, but I enjoy even like being surprised to see something I never that I didn't see the last time that was there. Yeah, yep. As long as we have curiosity on the mind, not mastery. Mm-hmm. So we have humility and not arrogance and pride. Yeah, like lifelong Bible reading is a great adventure. Yeah, uh, one that should stoke our curiosity and excitement, and enjoyment. Yeah. But it's when we like, no, we got it all figured out. Now I'm going to go out and like batter people who oppose me mm-hmm. in their mm-hmm. biblical conclusions. That's when I think this thing has a dark turn. Yeah. And I think that's something that we must avoid. And maybe go back to this uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse that mm-hmm. uh, the writers of SI tried to get us to. Yeah. Right. Which is like, what's our whole motivation behind, you know, Bible memorization? Is it so that we can be a warrior for God and. You know, be the, the uh, guard dog, as D.A. Carson called himself, mm-hmm. barking at all of the false teachers out there. Now, we need to be, be aware of false teaching. We mm-hmm. need to, you know, test everything. Sure. Yeah. But is the posture, loving kindness, the awe of God, the desire to serve the church, or is it like deep underneath the motivation is no, like I want to be, you know, the big bad bully on the block. Yeah. Uh, with, you know, with the Bible in hand. And I, I just go back to, you know, the To Kill a Mockingbird um, Atticus Fitch said, you can do as much damage with the Bible in your hands as you can a bottle of liquor in your hand. Mm. We said to be reminded that that is a dark temptation behind this too, is yeah. to master the Bible so that I can use it as a war club, a <laughs> weapon for battle. As yeah. 51 says, or is the motivation, no, I'm an off God. Mm-hmm. I love the people of God. I love the message of Jesus. And therefore, I want to uh, teach myself, and Lord willing, if I get the platform, help inform others of this great news, this good news yeah. that we can all hear and be transformed by yeah. and begin to uh, participate in the work of God, of God in the world around us. I think yeah. that's what's at stake. Yeah. yeah. So to kind of wrap up, so I think yeah, yeah. context is important. Yeah. Do some research. Yep. Read some big books. Read some heavy books. Right. And just and sign up for a lifelong living, man. This is a mortgage payment type of behavior. Mm-hmm. This is something I want to tend to again and again. Um, and it's going to transform me. And Lord willing, it could I could be a conduit then for someone to hear this uh, transformational truth as well. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, it's an important topic, man. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. And <laughs> well, thanks good for, discussion. Well, thanks for your, like, thanks for, you know, how what you added too, because this is a, such an interesting behavior. Who, who would, again, who would have thought UFC? Sometimes I feel like our topics are just someone's doing a Mad Lib somewhere. <laughs> we got to get UFC. We got to get some Bible verses. We got. I never saw this one coming, but I'm glad, I'm glad we talked about it. So, <laughs> Good, man. Good All stuff. Right. Well, thank you. Yep. Thanks to you, as always, for watching. We'll be here Sunday next week, so we hope to see you around. Yep. See you next time. Have a good one.